What is up guys, Max here, and welcome back to another After Effects tutorial. Now, in today's tutorial, we'll be learning how to make this logo animation. Not real sure how to explain it. It breaks apart into it's like a puzzle, I don't know. You can see it on the screen. Looks like that. Super easy to make, so let's get started. And right before we get started, feel free to download this project file. It's a template. It's really simple. Drag and drop. There's a link down in the description. Jump down there, download it, not a big deal. Other than that, feel free to follow this tutorial and make it on your own. Let's learn something together. How about that? Let's do this. So now that we have After Effects open, you can see that there's like this finished version of the thing. Yeah. Not too difficult. If we kind of digest what's going on here, comes on into pieces, different layers are happening, um, and then it flows off the screen like that. As always, to get started, you get a right click in your project panel and click New Composition. But if you don't see your project panel, we will go to Window and Project right here and the workspaces and window things. It's for all you newbies who don't know how to find the project panel, but for you pros, you'll know where it's at. So we're going to right click in our project panel, click New Composition. A dialog box pops open and it's going to be called something. Doesn't matter what it's called. So let's 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 start with the you know let's call this Main Composition. Then we'll width 1920 by 1080. Let's do frame rate 60 frames per second. Let's make this a 10 second animation. Background color black. Square pixels. I think we're good to go. Let's do that. Okay. Now, first thing first, we need a logo to put inside of this composition. So let's turn off our action safe. So click this little button right here. Title and action safe. Turns these like lines off for us. And let's just find a logo. Doesn't matter what it is. So I'm just going to drag in any old logo I have stored on my desktop. You might recognize it, you might not, but it doesn't matter. It's just a picture. It can be your logo, any logo, it doesn't matter. Now this logo is pretty big for the comp, so we're going to scale it down by grabbing these little edges right here. See this little square? Holding shift on our keyboard and scaling it down with proportions. Just like that. Now this is the Instagram logo. Um, if you want, you can follow me on Instagram with the link down below. But let's continue. Now that we have our logo in the composition, we're going to right click on the logo layer and click pre-compose, which is going to put our logo in its own little pre-comp so we can kind of change the logo out later to kind of make this animation a template. So we're going to call this put logo here. And boom, put logo here. So later on in our animation, we can double click put logo here and change this logo out at any point in time. Does not matter. Now what I might do is change the composition size of this logo because it's huge. Uh, composition, composition settings, it's 2000 by 2000. Let's do 800 by 800. Click OK. And just scale down the Instagram logo once again. Because if we put in a, a different logo that's smaller than the like 2000 pixels, it won't fit very well. So that can cause some problems later down the road. But now we can go back to main composition, click up here. Um, to jump back and forth between these two compositions and we can hit S on our keyboard once again and scale up this logo to 100% just like that looks pretty good to me and maybe we'll jump back in here and scale this down a little more so composition composition settings take it back down let's do 500 500 by 500 to make that nice square logo scale Instagram down again go back to main composition and now we can see that this has been rendered there it is Still small on screen, looks good to me. Right on. Now, what we're going to do is actually we're going to duplicate this logo layer a few times. So, Control or Command D on your keyboard to duplicate. Boom, 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 boom. I think five times, maybe six times is enough. Uh, let's let's do seven times, just for safety's sake. I think I had eight layers in the last one. But what we're going to do is we're going to put a mask on each one of these layers to kind of break it up into different pieces. So what we're going to do is pick a layer, grab our pen tool at the top of the uh, toolbar up here, or hit G on your keyboard for a shortcut, click the pen tool, and we're just going to start drawing on this, just like this. That's one piece. Drag this piece. And you want these to overlap just a little bit. And grab this piece. And then grab this piece and just keep doing these little masks on top of the layer. And what this is doing is actually cutting out each one of these layers to be its own like respective mask layer. 
and then six can be the middle, kind of like a diamond shape, like that. And seven can be this final piece right here. Now, we can see that we're missing some pieces in our mass, so what we can do is actually click on this and just find what we're missing. That looks pretty good. We can actually kind of like um, click V on our keyboard and grab this, hold, click shift and click this, move that up. Actually click this little button right here, mass convert vertex and change this to a point. We can click on this layer right here, I think it's over here, and actually bring um, V on our keyboard, bring this down, bring this up right here, bring this up over here, just to kind of cover up these pieces we're missing. Grab this, that's that one, this is this one. Grab this piece right here, bring it down a little further. Grab this, I like that piece in the middle right there. Actually, no, let's, let's, let's go ahead and fill this in. That's good. This is good right here. Um, then we need to grab this piece right here and actually fill this part in right here. Maybe bring this down like, like so and bring this fat piece up right here, bring that over, looks good right there. Some top pieces we're missing here. Yeah, yeah, and bring this piece over right here. Now, we can see if we turn each individual piece on, it is just different pieces of a puzzle that are all in the same layer, just like that. Pretty easy, right? Not too big a deal. Now, what we can do, oop, there's a tiny piece missing right here, so let's actually grab this, move it down. Now, what we're going to do is actually grab each one of these layers, and we're going to take the anchor point from each perspective layer and use our pan behind tool right here at the top of the toolbar and move each one of these anchor points kind of to like an edge of one of these layers. So this is that piece. This is going to be this piece. This is going to be this piece. This is going to be down here, right there. This is going to be right there and this is going to be down here. Now what this is going to do when we rotate and flip our layers in 3D, it'll rotate around those anchor points. So what we can do now is actually turn all of our layers into 3D layers by clicking this little click button right here. Now if you don't see this little click button, what you're going to do is in this little gray column in After Effects, right click columns and do switches, which will open up this 3D little layer thing here, which is what you want. Now so highlight everything, and click the 3D button, turn everything into 3D. Now what we're gonna do now is actually keyframe our orientation on each layer. So move down your timeline a little bit. Let's say, I don't know, a second and a half, that's, that's pretty good, pretty quick. Um, click everything, click down. Um, click down on transform and keyframe the orientation. Let's scroll down. Let's move this layer up so we can see everything. Transform. Transform. Orientation has been keyframed on everything, which is what we wanted. So we had everything highlighted. We dropped down on everything. And we put the transform down and keyframe the orientation. Now we'll go back in time. Let's close all these layers down. And we're going to change the orientation manually with our mouse. So grab this top layer. Um, click W on your keyboard. Hold it down to hold the uh, rotation tool. And actually just pull it up. Pull it up like that. We'll pull this one up. We'll pull this one down, kind of like this. Pull this one down. Pull this one down. Pull this one down over here. And pull this one down right there. Now, what this is going to do is we're going to actually see these flow up like this. We're moving those keyframes back and forth. We click U on our keyboard. We can clearly see the keyframes happen like that. But now we need to add another type of keyframe to make it work for us. We need to do the opacity keyframes. So highlight everything, click T on your keyboard, keyframe the opacity, drag it down a little bit, about right there, to make them fade in really quick, and drip, type zero for the opacity to put another keyframe in this where it goes like that. Awesome stuff. Let's continue. So now what we need to do is do the end animation on our logo so it flows upward like the other one. So if you see here that it actually falls in like this. Yep, 
and flows upward after that. So we have this, goes up like this. And now we put P on our keyboard, highlight everything, click P on our keyboard, keyframe the position, grab one of these with your pointer tool and just gonna move up just like that. So it goes like this, sits for a second and moves up. Cool. And then what we'll need to do is do the T for opacity, T. Keyframe it, click this little diamond here, keyframes everything. And it's gonna fade away just like this down to zero. And everything will fade away. Like that, like that. Cool. Now, close down everything. And what we're gonna do is click U on our keyboard, open everything back up. We're going to highlight all of these keyframes, right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease, which gives us that nice ease on our keyframes that makes it look better in the animation. So what we can do now, and boom, just like that. Now, what we're gonna do actually is probably speed up this animation a little bit, highlight this keyframe here and make this happen a little quicker. So it's like, just like that, sits for a second and then fades away. So, I think that it's looking pretty good. And to show all keyframes like I've been doing, you just click U on your keyboard. You can see all the keyframes at once, which is pretty nice. And also close everything down. As long as the layers are highlighted, it works. So, we had this. Let's fit to the screen. We can see our animation happen. Just like that. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna kinda tier this animation. So it like, we're gonna grab this layer, we're gonna pull this one here, 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 and pull this one here. And that's gonna make our animation kinda of like build, just like that. It's all I'm doing is, you know, kinda of caddying these animations. I don't think caddying is a word, but it kinda of makes them all tear in like that. It's kinda of nice. Now that we have all of these kinda of the way we want them, they all flow in a certain way. Looks pretty cool to me. I like that. I might put this this piece right here, kind of towards the end. Let's see how that looks. So the middle kind of finishes off the main piece. Looks pretty awesome. I'll take that. Cool. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna highlight everything. We're gonna right click and pre-compose. Let's call this another comp, doesn't matter what it's called, and click enter. Boom, now we have this one composition that does that, super, super simple. Now what we're gonna do now is we're gonna command D, duplicate this, command D, duplicate that, command D, and duplicate that, and duplicate that, or control D on your PC keyboard. I always, command is like natural for me to say. So. What we're gonna do is do this one. We're gonna caddy all of these. So it's kinda like a tier of animation, a good bit. So it's like boom, 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 boom. Lots of different layers. Now what we can do is actually go to our effects and presets. And if you don't see your effects and presets window, you're gonna go to window, effects and presets right here, pops this open. We're gonna type hue and saturation, or just hue. Hue and saturation pops up. We're gonna drag this onto this layer and we're gonna drag it a little bit, copy this effect, command C or control C, command V or control V on the next layer below that, change it a little more, then another command or control V and change that one a little more. So each layer has a different hue of its animation. So boom, 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 boom. Looks kind of crazy, right? Let's take the master saturation of hue and saturation down to zero so it's black and white. Maybe this one can be also black and white. And what else we can do is actually highlight layers two, three, and four, and take the opacity down just a hair to 80%. Just like that. And what's cool about this, if you kind of go down on this layer, goes up, goes out, 
you can kind of repeat this animation where it just kind of goes. How cool is that? Awesome. Now, one more time, we're going to highlight everything, right click, pre compose. Let's call it final comp, or just final, it's fine. Final forward or backslash, okay, that's fine. Right click, new, solid. Let's put a background behind this to see what it looks like with color. Let's do a black background, it'll work for this. Click OK. Drag it below our layer, and we can really see what this looks like on this. That's pretty cool. I might actually take the middle layer and drag it out to a little earlier. It's like kind of like this. I think that'll look a lot better. Yeah, and this one can be a little later. Just like that. Now we have this awesome animation that builds all these different layers, pieces of the puzzle. And if you're really crazy, you can probably take this down a little further. So they're all separating later in time. You can just kind of play with the timing to make your animation the best. It's a serious build right there. Now what we can do is actually uh, go to effects and presets, type CC, force motion blur, drag it onto this layer. We're just going to add motion blur to our animation. And I'm going to bring the CC Force Motion Blur shutter angle up to 360 to give it more of a blur. Um, I know it's 60 frames per second, but it'll look nice. Now, when you add motion blur, it is more um, processor intensive to render. But if you're on a workstation, it renders pretty well. And laptops shouldn't take too long, but it will work. So boom, 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 boom. And depending on how many layers you want happening, that might be too much for you. You can always just turn one of these off. It's not a big deal and drag this back some. Let's turn the CC Force Motion Blur off so we can see how fast, see a faster render. You can always jump back into this as well and change the hue of stuff to kind of like pick your favorite color. So something that's barely different is also pretty good. So you can really, that's pretty cool. And now that this is finished, it's really easy to go into our project, jump into put logo here, and just put a different logo inside of this. And we can quickly see that our animation gets updated. So let's drop a, I don't know, uh, a very well-known logo in here. It's massive. Everybody knows what that is. And go to our main composition, and then we can quickly see that it's a cool build for something new. Yep. And that is how you make this animation. As always, I am Max. Please like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I hope you have a great day or night or evening or wherever you're at. Enjoy it. Other than that, I'll catch you guys in the next video.